So I wanted to do another podcast here and talk about something else that was really important, um, and that is the issue of poverty. And what is interesting is, as you see, my last podcast was on the on heroes and uh, how society, fake morality versus real morality, and how you're going to see fake morality fall away and real morality step in. I think you're going to see the same thing with community, and you're also going to see this. You're also going to see the veil torn off of things like poverty. I think a lot of Americans, a lot of people, a lot of a lot of Christians, uh, since I've I've grown up in the church, uh, I've seen a lot of Christians get into the mindset of a wealthy mindset, an individualistic mindset, and just Americans in general have a wealth mindset. They don't understand what poverty looks like. They don't understand what it appears like. And a lot of Christians, even in the church, where, you know, the church is supposed to be this this place. It's like a, a coin, the koinonia, the community, the coming together. There's actually a, a deeper meaning to koinonia. The word used for Peter and those with him, uh, James and John, when they were fishing, the Bible refers to them as a koinonia. What does that mean, that they were a koinonia? Well, it means that they were in it together. They were like partners. They were like business partners. They were in, in an enterprise together. And so that, that kind of, you end up seeing from this word koinonia in the community, you have this community that is not, and this is interesting because you can actually look at, you have this community that is built around sharing and self-sustainment, but they're all interconnected and working together. Nobody's expendable. They're all in it together. It's like a similar, it's a shared enterprise. They're survivalists. Now that doesn't mean a socialism, and that's very clear. Um, when you look at, there's a lot of people that like to look at like Acts 2.45, where they all shared everything in common. And then they kind of think, well, obviously they shared everything in common. They sold their stuff gift to the poor and stuff like that. Well, that means that they all just went out, sold everything they had, they didn't have anything, then they shared with each other. Well, that doesn't make any sense. How could they continue to work and produce and be a part of society if they just sold everything and gave it all away? I mean, no, like a tent maker still needs his tools. Like a farmer still needs off his, his hoe and everything. Like ever his, his tools. Like you, you need your house in order to, for your children to have a place to sleep. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a stupid, silly concept that they were a complete communism and that they all gave all their, all their wealth and power together to like the disciples and said, distribute this force, please. That, that doesn't make sense. What they did do, however, is they were a real genuine community of people that had to look out for each other for survival. You know, when I was a kid, I, I know everything about what it's like to be in an impoverished community and you're all family, you know each other. It's like if somebody next door needs to borrow a baking dish because you're the only one that has a baking dish in the area they can use, you let them have it. Let them use it. And then you you get it back eventually. You know, But you're in it together, so you might as well let them have it. Somebody can't get a ride to school. Well, you know what? Dad doesn't mind taking their kids to school along with your kids. They're like, we're in it together. It's like we can allot resources to help each other as needed. And that's what you see in the, in the scripture too. In Acts 2.45 is they, they helped each other as needed. That's important. And so I think what you're going to see is poverty is beginning to hit America again, beginning to hit the church again. And obviously this is, this is more of a religious podcast because this is more about the church's response, what the church needs to be doing. I have thought for a very long time that the church really is not structured to be able to help people within its fold that need help. It's, it's where our society is too individualistic and too wealthy. And we've, we've built a structure based on that where everybody just kind of sits, stands in their own lane. They're self-reliable. They don't ask for help. They simply help benefit the larger organization. And it does other things other than help everyone else be sustained. That's not necessarily the case. The koinonia, the community, the churches was never meant to be, it is a, you know, we can have a, a, a joint enterprise 
that helps you know missions overseas that helps uh, kids that are impoverished in third world countries that helps uh, you know a food pantry for people outside the church that need it you know for inner city children to be educated we can have a church that is all this stuff it's all really good stuff and we should do it too but there's also people right within our own community that that will need help and where are we helping them within our own community where is where is that koinonia where is that sense of we're in a joint enterprise together and we're here to help each other. We we need that. Um, we have to have that. And, and the world's going to start. It's going to world's going to start needing that. It's going to start needing communities of of people that are willing to do that. And I, you know, it's it's interesting. Individualism. Um, I, I have a I have a, a love hate relationship with it. I love it because there are some sp aspects of individualism that people are trying to dispense of without knowledge without understanding and you can't like like human rights without without being able to define people by the individual and have individual value human rights disappears you can't just you can't just label people black people and white people and expect there to be human rights it's not going to happen okay as long as, as as long as you label people by these large ideals ideas you put these big labels on them Human rights will, will decay and, and cease to exist. That is a whole other podcast that I could get into. But what we can't have is an individualism that is, comes from the privilege of wealth, where we're, we're so separated from each other because we're used to everybody being self-sufficient. That is disappearing. There are people that will have needs. There are people that will have they will, they will, they'll have desires and that aren't met. They'll have, they'll be suffering. They're going to need a lifeline. And if we're not real koinonia, then we won't give it to them. But there, you know, to be honest, it's not like the church doesn't know this. There are some churches that are hyper, have, you know, some parts of America have been so individualistic that maybe people don't give help. And, and you know, I've had, I've, I've written articles on how American individualism has changed perceptions over time. The, you know, it wasn't the institution or the church itself that did charity. It, Christians went out from the church and did charity. And so you got your charity from the church through other institutions like hospitals and schools and things like that. Well, all those things have been taken over by the government. And so when people look at the church, they go, what are you doing? It's like, well, I mean, the church is out there serving in all these other institutions. What do you want us to do? But as, a, as the actual Koinonia community, though, we need to draw together. We need to see that. People need to step up. They need to be regular everyday heroes. And, and I think that a, a reconnection with poverty is going to teach them that. It's going to teach them what that means. It's going to teach them what that looks like. There's a story in scripture where you have people that are poor. That when Once you realize that people are impoverished, the meaning of the passage begins to change. Um, so you have all these stories in, in Scripture where people have to share or think about this passage of Scripture. So in Luke chapter 15, we have a woman who has ten silver coins. She loses one of them. And then she takes a lamp and she scours the entire house looking for it. Now, number one, rich people automatically don't understand this because they're like, it's just a coin. It's a silver coin. Who cares? I mean, obviously, if you've been, if you, wealthy people, sh a lot of them should be able to understand, but that, it's just a, a scenario where the, the real meaning of the passage has been removed from us because we've lived so, so privilegedly and with such wealth. Um, and then, of course, she looks for it, and then at the end, she finds it, and then she tells everybody, Rejoice with me because I found it. Well, people don't under, and then once again, people could be like, why are you rejoicing over this little coin? Why would everybody else care? Like if uh, my uncle right now lost a hundred bucks and then he found it, would it be a huge deal for me? Well, number one, it might be worth more than a hundred bucks if it's a silver coin. But to be honest, like, yeah, if we're a community, a coin and and we care that much about each other, I'd be happy with them. And because it affects me too. You know, if I know that my uncle's resources are part of my resources as well, and that's what we all have to live on, and he finds 
maybe we'll call it a thousand. He finds a thousand dollars he thought he lost. I'd be like, great. That's awesome. Makes me feel so much better because it's ours now. There's a sense of us. And I think that's what Koinonia looks like. It's, it's not a socialism or a communism, but it's also not a complete individualism. Everybody's in their own little lane and nobody cares about each other or talks to each other. No, it's, it's everything is we, we care about each other. We're in it together as a, a joint venture, an enterprise together. It's a Koinonia.